Hey, what's up everyone? Today we're going to be going over question one of the 2023 AP Chemistry FRQ. Um, so let's start with uh, part A. Magnes has several, has several common oxidation states. Write the complete electron configuration for a manganese atom in the ground state. If you look at your periodic table, uh, manganese has an atomic number of 25, which means that in its ground state, it's going to have 25 electrons. And those electrons are going to fill up according to off boss principle, which says that electrons fill up in these order of uh, shells and orbitals. So we need to increase our electron count until we reach 25. So let's start with 1s2 and then 2s2, 2p6, uh, 3s2, 3p6. How many do we have? We have 4, 10, 12, 18. Uh, we need seven more. So let's do 4s2 and uh, 3d5. And that adds up to 25 electrons. So that would be the complete electron configuration for a manganese atom in its ground state. Let's go to uh, 2. When manganese forms cations, electrons are lost from which uh, subshell first? Identify both the number and letter associated with the subshell. Um, when electrons are lost, they're lost from the valence, elect of the, from the valence shell, um, which is going to be the shell with the highest number. So if you look um, at our uh, electron configuration, the one with the highest number is going to be uh, the, the four. And uh, the only shell that we have, the only orbital that we have is the 4s2 orbital. So we are going to lose electrons from the 4s uh, orbital. Let's go down. Um, a student performs an experiment to produce a manganese salt of unknown composition, MnX uh, chloride Y, and determine its empirical formula. The student places a sample of manganese in a beaker containing excess hydrochloric acid as represented by the following equation. The student heats the resulting mixture only, uh, until only uh, manganese chloride remains in the beaker. The data are given in the following table. B asks, calculate the mass of chloride in the sample of manganese chloride remaining in the beaker. Okay, so if you look at your masses, you're given the mass of the empty beaker the mass of the beaker and the manganese solid and the mass of the beaker with the manganese chloride. Now, if you want the mass of just the chloride, you could subtract your third mass from your second mass. The only difference between these two is the fact that the third one has the chloride in it and this uh, second one has only the manganese in it. Um, so the only difference is going to be the chloride. So let's do 62.673 grams minus 61.262 grams and let's plug that into a calculator 62.673 minus 61.262 and that gets you 1.411 grams and that is your answer let's go to uh, part C Calculate the number of moles of chloride in the sample of manganese chloride remaining in the beaker. Well, we just got a mass of our chloride, um, so let's turn that into moles. Um, we have 1.411 grams, and the molar mass of chloride is 35.45 grams. So if we do that, 1.411 divided by 35.45, we have... 0, 0.0 uh, let's say four uh, moles of chloride let's go to part d the student measure determines that uh, 0.0199 moles of manganese was used in the experiment use the data to determine the empirical formula of the manganese chloride the problem tells you that um, you have 0 0.0199 moles of manganese and you just found out that you have 0.04 moles of chloride. And so all an empirical formula is, is that it tells you the ratio between the number of moles of each element in that compound. So if you look at the ratio between these two uh, elements, it's going to be in a 1 to 1 to 2 ratio. Uh, 1 being the manganese and the 2 being the chloride. So the empirical formula is just going to be based on that ratio. Your manganese is going to have a subscript of 1. And your chloride is going to have a subscript of two let's go to part e the student repeats the experiment using the same amounts of manganese and hydrochloric acid and notices that some of the manganese chloride splatters out of the beaker as it is heated to dryness 
Will the number of moles of chloride calculated for this trial be greater than, less than, or equal to the number of moles calculated in part C? Justify your answer. Well, if some of your manganese chloride spills out, this number is going to be lower than it should be. And if this number is lower than it should be, then the amount of the mass of the chloride we calculate is going to be less than it should be. And if the mass of the chloride is less than it should be, then the number of moles should be less than it should be. So if the manganese chloride uh, splatters out, the number of moles of chloride that we calculate will be less than the number calculated in part C. Okay, so if some manganese chloride splatters out of the beaker, we will calculate an artificially lower mass for the chloride, and therefore the number of moles um, of chloride we calculate will be less than the number calculated in part C. Let's go down to F. Another compound of manganese, uh, manganese oxide, is used in alkaline batteries, represented by the following diagram. Some half reactions are given in the table. Um, one, based on the half reactions given in the table, write the balanced net ionic equation for the reaction that has the greatest thermodynamic favorability. Remember, the reaction that's going to give the greatest thermodynamic favorability is going to be the reaction with the highest um, cell potential. And cell potential is calculated um, by the potential of the cathode minus the potential of the anode. So we essentially need to find the two half reactions that have the greatest net difference between their potentials. And the ones with the greatest thermodynamic dynamic favorability are going to be the, the greatest values of the E cell. So which two have the greatest difference in their values of potential? What's well, going to be the second one and the third one? But hold on, which one is going to be the which one's going to be in the cathode, which one's going to be in the anode? Well, your E cell needs to be overall positive. So in order for this to be positive, then the, the third one has to be the cathode, and the second one has to be the anode. We, we're going to have 0 0.15 minus negative 1.28, which is going to give you an overall positive value. So in your cathode, you're going to have the reduction half reaction, and in your anode, you're going to have the oxidation half reaction. So uh, we can the third uh, half reaction can be put as is. So 2MnO2 plus H2O uh, plus two electrons produces Mn2O3 plus 2OH minus. But your anode is going to have to be flipped. Remember, these are your reduction half reactions. And the anode, um, the oxidation half reaction is going to occur. And the oxidation half reaction is just going to be the opposite of the reduction half reaction. So we're going to need to add zinc solid uh, plus 2OH minus uh, to produce zinc oxide plus H2O and two electrons. And if we want the overall um, net ionic equation, we're going to have to cancel some, some things. So the two electrons cancel, the two hydroxides cancel, and uh, water cancels. So what are we left with? We're left with 2MnO2 plus zinc produces MN2O3 uh, plus zinc oxide. And the AP usually isn't too stingy about um, like putting the, the phases next to the compounds, but all of these things are solid. Let's go to 2. Uh, calculate the value of your standard, um, your E cell for the over, overall reaction. And we've kind of already done that. So remember your E cell is the potential of the cathode minus the potential of the anode. And we've already found those out. So cathode is 0 0.15 uh, minus the anode, which is negative 1.28. So your overall E cell is going to be 1.43, positive 1.43. All right, let's move on to part two. Uh, calculate the value of your standard free energy in kilojoules per mole. So your standard free energy is going to be negative NFE cell. The N is the number of electrons um, that are transferred in your redox reaction. F is your Faraday's constant, and E cell is going to be the value we calculated here. So delta G standard is going to be negative N. Uh, if you look, there's two electrons that are being transferred in this redox reaction. So two electrons uh, times F, which is Faraday's constant, which is 96, 485, 
um, coulombs per mole of electrons and E is going to be 1.43 uh, joules per coulomb. So if you plug this into a calculator, negative 2 times 96.45 times 1.43. Now this value that you get is in uh, joules because uh, the unit that you use for your E cell is joules per coulomb. So let's take this value and divide it by 1000 since the question asks for uh, kilojoules per mole. Um, and that'll get you your answer, which is negative 276 kilojoules per mole. Um, all right, let's go on to the last part. A certain claims that the total mass of an alkaline battery decreases as the battery operates because the anode loses mass. Do you agree with the student's claim? While it is true that the anode loses mass, all the mass that's lost by the anode is just deposited on the cathode. So overall, there is no net uh, change in the mass. Um, if there was, that would just break the uh, law of conservation of mass. Um, so no, the student's claim is incorrect. We don't agree. So the student is incorrect. The mass that is lost by the anode is gained by the cathode. So there is no, uh, whoops, there is no uh, net change in, in mass of the battery. And that was question one. Um, I hope that was helpful. I hope you learned something. Uh, I have the rest of the uh, questions in a playlist. They should pop up on screen. Um, thank you for watching, and I'll see you later. Peace.